Hello everyone, this is Circuit Python Weekly for Tuesday, October 15th, 2024. This is the time of the week where we get together, talk about all things Circuit Python. I'm Liz, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on Circuit Python. Circuit Python is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. Circuit Python development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and Circuit Python, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafruit.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday as it did this week. In the notes doc, there's a link to the calendar you can view online or add your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is a shared notes document that accompanies the meeting and recording. You can contribute to this document beforehand. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video so you can use the doc to skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 30 to 60 minutes. After each meeting, we post a link to the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages, find the latest notes doc, so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read through the meeting. This meeting is held in five parts. This first part is community news. Second part is state of CircuitPython, libraries, and Blinka. Third part is hug reports fourth part status updates, and fifth part in the weeds. And with that, we will get started with community news and our first timestamp. So, big thing on the board this week is Python 3.13 final released. Python 3.13 is the newest major release of the Python programming language. It contains many new features and optimizations compared to Python 3.12, compared to latest release candidate uh, there's uh, two small bug fixes and some documentation about testing changes. But then another big release for CircuitPython, 9.2.0 Beta 1 released. CircuitPython 9.2.0 9 9 Beta 1 is a beta release for 9.2.0. There are a few known bugs that will be fixed before the final release of 9.2, and there are some highlights. Many bug fixes since 9.2.0 Beta 0. New bus I/O I squared C probe and bitbang I/O I squared C probe methods to check for a single device address using the new ESP IDF I squared C driver. For ESP32 S3, SDIO has been added. There is an incompatible change, a change default host name for all expressive boards to the ESP IDF default, which is expressive. Previous board specific names were not applied consistently. Use Wi Fi radio host name to set a custom host name. And another incompatible change, use default hostname for MDNS, fix MDNS collision mangling. And then in the newsletter, there was a lovely Adafruit Playground project, uh, which was displaying AIO plus local weather conditions matrix weather system. And these news items and more are available in our weekly Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which goes out via email on Monday mornings. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter. Thanks to Anne for putting the newsletter together. If you have any Python on hardware projects to share or find content you'd like to see included, please consider contributing to the newsletter. You can open a PR on GitHub in the CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter repository, tag an engineer or hashtag CircuitPython on Mastodon or X, or email cpnews at adafruit.com with the link. And that is community news. Next up is State of CircuitPython, Libraries, and Blinka. And uh, let's see. Yes, this is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our status updates. We'll talk about the project overall, then separately discuss the core libraries and blink up. So first up overall, there were 18 pull requests merged by 15 authors. Uh, names I don't recognize. Uh, Regis Cyto Pluto Phage, Sola85, uh, Montal, Hexat. R. Bedia, uh, Data Noise TV, and uh, Snakey Maker Cat. Uh, there were four reviewers Foamy Guy, Jepler, Dan Halpert, and Tanute. 
uh, 15 closed issues by six people, 14 opened by 11 people, and the Hacktober Fest label has been applied to zero issues. And now we're going to hear from Scott about the core. Hi, thanks, Liz. Okay, so for the core, we had 10 poll requests merge from seven different authors, which is higher than usual, I would say. Uh, Data Noise TV, Solo 85, Bablock B, Hex That, and Sam Blaney are all infrequent folks, so thanks to them. Three reviewers, Dan, Jeff, and myself. Uh, we have 23 open poll requests, so we're a couple under our one page goal of 25. Um, that's when, that's how many fit on a single page on GitHub. I think that's a good goal. Uh, issues wise, we had 11 closed issues by five people and nine opened by six people, so we're not down two for a total of 743 open issues. Uh, we use the milestone system to track prioritization for Adafruit funded folks. Um, that means that if you're not funded by Adafruit, feel free to pick up bugs that have been marked long term, uh, which is tend to, tend to be the, the lowest priority for Adafruit. Um, we have zero open issues on 91X, which is good. That's our latest stable. And we have five open issues on 920, which is hopefully our next stable release. Uh, we also have 13 open issues on 10.0. So um, three issues not assigned to Milestone. We'll have to just double check that. But um, over the weekend, we tend to get a few in that haven't been triaged yet. So generally, I think we're keeping up. And that's it for the core. Great. Thank you, Scott. And now we'll hear from Tim about the libraries. All right. Thanks, Liz. This section covers all of the uh, CircuitPython libraries, all of which can be found under names on GitHub, like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of whatever library uh, it is after that. Um, across all of those libraries this week, we had seven pull requests merged by seven different authors, uh, although the numbers may be thrown off a bit because I did go back and try to grab uh, the names from yesterday since we are doing a Tuesday report. So the uh, the one new name I wanted to add that was newer or less frequent, uh, less familiar to my eye was L. Bao, uh, which is one that I grabbed from yesterday so they didn't appear on the, the rest of the list. Um, so thanks to them, as well as all the other folks whose names are read earlier as newer uh, contributors, as well as some of our more usual suspects. Um, for those PRs, we had three reviewers. Thanks to Dan and Scott and myself for reviewing this week. Um, of the pull requests that were merged, the oldest one was four days. The newest ones were all down at one day, so mostly on the newer side this week. That leaves us now with uh, 43 open pull requests. The oldest one is a 789-day draft. The newest one is at one day. Um, across the last week, we had three issues closed by one person with five new issues opened up by five people. Um, it does say Hacktoberfest label is assigned to zero issues, but the thing is we assign that to the repos now. So actually any issues or any PRs across all the libraries uh, should all be counting for Hacktoberfest uh, due to the tag that's on the actual repo itself. Um, we do have 100, uh, no, excuse me, 887 open issues across all these libraries, and there are 97 of those that are marked as good first issues, which you can find listed over at circuitpython.org slash contributing, which is the website where you should head if you are interested in getting involved with CircuitPython. On that page, you'll find a list of open PRs and open issues. Uh, if you're looking to contribute, the place where we usually point folks towards first is that list of open PRs. Um, take a scroll through the list, find something that you either have an interest in or you have the hardware to test and click through to GitHub. Take a look at the code. You can look it over for syntax, spelling, uh, logic, um, anything that you have got the capability to do so for. Uh, if you do have the hardware, go ahead and give it a test and leave a comment there on GitHub letting us know how it went and what you found when you looked it over. If you get comfortable with that process and want to uh, get leveled up to start leaving official reviews on GitHub, we can work with you to make that happen as well. Uh, if you want to start getting your hands dirty with some coding, you can also click over to the open issues uh, side of that page at circuitpython.org slash contributing. And again, look for something that is interesting to you or that you've got the hardware for. Uh, click through to GitHub, figure out what that issue is, whether it's a bug fix or a new feature or an enhancement, something like that. 
um, take a crack at implementing whatever it is and submit a PR uh, with that change. Um, we do have guides for contributing using uh, Git and GitHub to all the CircuitPython projects um, over on the Learn Guide system. We also have folks who are around uh, on Discord who can help you out. So if you would like to contribute um, but feel that there's some barrier uh, in Git or version control or anything like that, uh, please feel free to come join us on the Discord. Say hi, let us know what you're up to, uh, and some folks will be more than happy to, uh, to help you out. We want everyone to be able to contribute in whatever way works for them. Um, in terms of uh, PyPI weekly download stats this week, we had, um, uh, interestingly, we we're up over a million. Uh, I wonder if I fat fingered a number there or something. So it shows, uh, it shows actually 1.3 million, essentially 1,300,000 uh, and 306 across the 334 libraries, which were, were usually in the hundreds of thousands, but uh, I think that's a bit higher than normal. Um, the top tens list is here in the notes doc if you'd like to take a look at that, as are the list of updated libraries from the last seven days. And that's what we've got for libraries this week. Thanks. Thank you. And now I will read Blinka. Blinka is our compatibility uh, layer for CircuitPython on single board computers like Raspberry Pi. And there were three pull requests merged by two authors, M. Montal and Rapanda12, one reviewer, Foamy Guy. There are six open pull requests, one closed issue by one person, and zero new issues. There are currently 109 open issues. Um, PyPy downloads this week, 57,890. PyWheels downloads in last month, 19,742. And number of supported boards, 146. Pretty close to 150. And that is State of CircuitPython, Libraries, and Blinka. Next up is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start, and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you are text only or are missing the meeting, I'll read your notes and I will when I get to them in the list. So I will start, and I'll kick things off with a group hug. And now we'll hear from Dan, followed by Tim. Hey, okay, thanks. Uh, thanks to A. Sean Watson who found an issue with keypad shift register keys and documented it really well. And I had it was really on top of it and also uh, fixed some, doc some of the documentation to be clear. So all those things were great. So thank you, Sean. OK. Great. Thank you. We'll hear from Foamy Guy and then Jeff. All right, thank you. Um, hug reports for me, thanks to Jan No uh, this week for working on a display I.O. example for a library. Um, thanks to Sam Blenny, who shared a neat Halloween-themed uh, game based on display I.O. Uh, and group hug for everybody. Thanks. Awesome, thank you. Now we'll hear from Jeff. Hi there. So um, I have a group hug and then a hug for Mark. I'm really excited about your work on the uh, audio FX stuff, not to be confused with my learn guide circuit Python audio FX. It's totally unrelated. Great. Thank you. Now I will read for Mark. Uh, he has hug reports for D. Cooper uh, Durimple for all his work on the audio FX PR with him. Uh, Tan Newt for all his audio effects reviews, Jepler for quickly answering a question I had about a build issue, and Group Hug. And now we'll round it out with Tan Newt. Thanks again, Liz. Uh, <clears throat> kind of a group hug here for Dan, Jeff, Tim, and everyone else uh, for covering me as I have paternity leave very soon um, in the next couple weeks. It's immensely helpful to know things will continue without me for the time being. So thank you all. Great. Thank you, Scott. And that does it for Hug Reports. Next up is Status Updates. Status Updates is our time to tell folks what we're up to individually. I will start and we'll go through the list alphabetically. When I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. This is also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. If the discussion becomes too long for Status Updates, we can move it to In the Weeds. Uh, so I've been working on two Arduino projects past week. First was using an RP2040 USB host feather to create a turbo button gamepad. Feather acts as a transparent pass-through for the controller and sends any button pushes from the controller. Uh, when a specific combo is pressed, it sends a turbo button, aka rapidly pressing um, an A button over and over again. And then second project uses the QtPy CH32V203. 
Uh, I put together a simple e-ink daily calendar with it using an iSpy BFF and a Stemma RTC module. Uh, and now we'll hear from Dan. Yay. Um, so last week I released CircuitPython 920 Beta 1, as you read at the top of the meeting, and that catches up on several weeks of changes. And um, or it moves us closer toward uh, 920 Final. Um, there were some infrastructure issues recently. Um, Finks has frequent new releases, and often things break when it gets updated. So there was a new major release. And it broke uh, building the documentation. So I uh, reported that to the Sphinx folks and pinned it to an older version. Um, but they've already fixed a couple of the problems that I encountered. What it kind of says is maybe we should, <laughs> I don't know if we should keep it pinned or we should just um, wait a day or two because they almost always fix a few things after uh, a minor or a major version change. Um, another thing I brought up to date was that mm. the choice of operating systems that we use for the GitHub Actions uh, continuous integration runs, um, they were aging out Mac OS 12, and they said that we'd start joining warning people about that. So I switched it to Mac OS 13, and I switched Ubuntu from 2204 to 2404, and I thought it wasn't going to work because of um, like maybe Python problems, but they all just worked. So that's really nice. So we're up to date on that. So I'm continuing to fix bugs towards getting towards 920 final. I fixed uh, keypad bugs, a keypad bug and uh, some RP2350 bugs. And I'm working on various expressive BLE problems right now. Some of them uh, are actually um, like some errors in user code that are causing crashes. So they're sort of like, if it hurts, don't do that. So they're not showstoppers for 920, but it would be nice to get them fixed. On the other hand, we may go ahead and put out 920 and just say, we're going to fix these uh, soon rather than for 920. And finally, I've been working, uh, trying Scott's circuit matter um, development, and I've got, it, it, it does uh, a simple thing that he suggested trying uh and i'll continue to work and try that so that i can pick it up when scott is out on paternity leave and that's it great thank you and now we'll hear from foamy guy all right thanks uh last week i ran a patch to fix the sphinx theme uh, configuration across all the different libraries and use the adabot release tool to make a new release for it um, and also made a few tweaks to that release tool uh, after using it as well, submitted those. Um, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, I created a new library uh, to hold the anchored tile grid class, which I created and used recently uh, on the spirit board project that I've been working on. Um, but this particular bit of it is, is factored entirely out and much more generally useful. Um, I made the changes necessary in that spirit board project to run on smaller screen sizes. I started on Pi Portal Titano, which has got a nice and big screen, and I have it now working on the, uh, the standard Pi Portal as well, um, which should also fit the same as a couple of the feather wings, I think. Um, I, it kind of adding on to that, I tested a few ways in the learn guide uh, repo to use sim links to try to make it so that the code that's shared between the two different um, sizes and the various different devices uh, could could exist just once in the repo, but still get bundled into each of the different bundles targeting the different devices. Um, so I was doing some testing on different ways that the sim links can be set up. Uh, I didn't have much success with that yet, but I've learned uh, a bunch of things that don't work, at least currently. Uh, so I think I'm on the right path, at least, of knowing how I can do it um, to get that stuff in there. Uh, and then... Um, I actually noticed this morning when I was working on that new library that was created, I was setting up the docs for it. The docs had failed to build, uh, which uncovered that there was actually an issue in cookie cutter uh, from a couple of months back. It was updated to a new um, container version, but it turns out that read the docs actually uses different uh, names than GitHub Actions. So the container version that was specified was a GitHub Actions one, but doesn't actually work in uh, in Read the Docs. So I submitted a fix to Cookie Cutter uh, and the one other library um, that had that issue for it. Uh, and that's what I have been up to. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. That uh, Spirit Board project is really cool. And now we'll hear from Jepler. 
Hello again, let me find my spot in the document. Uh, so I finished my guide about uh, CircuitPython Polyphonic Audio FX, which is live on adafruit.com. And that shows how to how you can uh, attach buttons and run a sound effect when you press the different buttons. Um, so check that out. I spent most of last week on a personal project, which is a VT100 style terminal on RP2040. That's coded in C, not CircuitPython. I just mentioned it uh, to explain why I didn't have a whole lot of activity last week. So I've got a short list of items to work on next for Adafruit, a monophonic version of the AudioFX project that behaves uh, more like the existing AudioFX project, which is um, based on a really old microcontroller. And then I have some stuff related to the Flopsy, uh, Floppy Archiving project, and that will be under Arduino but that is to create an MFM floppy image to SD card copier and an MFM floppy emulator. So that's what I will be working on this week. Very cool. Thank you, Jeff. And now I'll read for Mark. Uh, audio effects is good to do a final review on, and I plan to add more effects and work on it more after the initial release. I'm very excited to play with that. Uh, and now we'll hear from Scott. Hello, and just an update, I just merged in audio effects, so it's actually merged into main as of a few minutes ago. Cool. <clears throat> um, as I alluded to in my hug reports, I'm less than two weeks away until the babies do, so uh, <laughs> I could disappear any moment, and it's getting close. Uh, I plan on being out afterwards for four weeks, um, so I'll be around maybe a, a week or two before the holidays, and then I'll be back in January for a while. Although I will be sleep deprived, I promise you that. Um, so what I'm working on is I'm working on circuit matter interfacing with Apple Home. Um, I was adding choking to responses because Apple Home reads all of the attributes up front. And right now I, I seem to be crashing the HomePod Mini, which is pretty impressive. Um, I think I may have figured out the issue, but I haven't retested it yet. Um, I'm using Matter.js. It shows an error with my response, so I'm fixing that. And hopefully once that's fixed, then Apple Home will be happy too. Um, so yeah, trying to get on off working uh, all the way from Apple Home to Circuit Matter. Very cool. Thank you, Scott. And that is it for status updates. It looks like there are no in the weeds topics, so we can go ahead and wrap things up. Uh, this has been the Circuit Python Weekly for Tuesday, October 15th, 2024. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and Circuit Python and those of us that work on Circuit Python, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held next Monday, as usual, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. This meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafruit.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPython NISA's Discord role. And we hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone.